So I hope all of you see my screen. I'm, I hope you see the camera as well. Um, welcome. Um, my name is Hizuki Mori of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, and it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the Kibo Cube six round announcement of awardees. This is an online side event on the occasion of the 59th session of the Scientific and Technical Subcommittee of the COPIS, so the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. This event is organized by us, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, and our partners in the Kibo Q program, JAXA. So before we begin, um, I'd like to give you some housekeeping rules. If you have any comments, any questions, please leave it in the chat box. My colleagues from the office will be active in the chat, giving you some useful links. So please make sure to check those out as well. And second, if you are on social media, please use the hashtag access to space for all and Kibo Cube to help us promote this event. We are active on all the social medias that you can see there. So this is the agenda of today's event. Um, I will be the master of ceremonies and will give you a short introduction to the access to space for all initiative and Kibo Cube. After that, I will be inviting the different um, speakers of the event, starting with our director. So before we go into the details of the event, I will quickly um, go over the Access to Space for All Initiative and Kibo Cube to give you an overview of what's happening right now. So the Access to Space for All Initiative is a joint initiative of UNUSA and space agencies, research institutions, universities, and industry to offer access to space research facilities, infrastructure, and information. The aim of the initiative is to develop technical know-how, engineering processes, and infrastructure in the different areas of hypergravity and microgravity, satellite development, and space exploration. And of course, to promote the international cooperation and peaceful uses of outer space. And as you can see here, partnership is a distinctive feature of the initiative. Our initiative is only possible thanks to the partnerships provided by the various public and private actors who are contributing to the initiative in various manners. We really like to emphasize again that space is relevant and can help achieve this space, um, the sustainable development goals, the SDGs. Access to Space for All as an initiative focuses on SDGs goals number four, quality education, eight, decent work and economic growth, and number nine, innovation, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And I would also like to mention that the applicants to the initiative and also to Kibo Cube are requested to make connections between their projects and the SDGs. And we have seen many different connections to the various SDGs and the projects. Our initiative is working progress and we are trying to expand our support. We are working to have three components that will form the initiative. The first one on the top is the hands-on component, which is the actual hands-on research opportunities. The second one is the tools component, which will introduce how to use tools such as software, open platforms, and systems to efficiently and effectively utilize the hands-on opportunities. And last but not least, we have the education component, which provides theoretical foundation to participate in the hands-on and tools component. And on the right, you see our three different tracks, and the components are structured to serve the different tracks. The hypergravity and microgravity track aims at um, building capacity for running experiments in and outside of Earth. The satellite development track aims at building capacity that enables the development, deployment, and operation of satellites. And the space exploration track covers different aspects related to space exploration. In this page, you can see the nine hands-on opportunities we currently have. We have two opportunities open at the moment, which are Hyperdust, open till the end of this month, and the PHI, the PHI mission. And we will be having a webinar on PHI next Monday, so the 21st of February. My colleagues will be putting up the register link, so if you're interested in applying for the PHI mission, please make sure to check that out. So Kibo Cube is a cooperation program between the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, which started from 2015. And the aim is to provide educational, educational or research institutions from developing countries with opportunities to deploy CubeSats, on which they develop and manufacture, from the International Space Station, the ISS Japanese Experiment Module Kibo. So why Kibo Cube? Why is it, why is it special? First of all, CubeSats offer a large variety of applications, and developing a CubeSat can be the first step for a country 
in the acquisition of the skills and know-how needed to develop a space program. Second, CubeSats are affordable to develop and represents an achievable entry point to space activities. And in KiboCube, JAXA will bear the costs of the launch of the CubeSat to the ISS and the deployment from Kibo. So the next point is lower vibration and more friendly environment during launch. Since the CubeSat will be taken to the ISS as cargo, it will have a more um, friendly launch. And last but not least, you will have administrative support from UNUSA and technical support from JAXA during the development. And last but not least, I would like to re-emphasize again that KiboCube contributes to the SDGs by fostering innovation and supporting education and training on skill sets for developing cutting edge technology. So with this, I hope you have an overview of the initiative and KiboCube. And now I am pleased to um, introduce the Director of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, Dr. Simonetta Di Pipo, to give us her opening remarks and announce the actual awardees. Um, the director, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm really honored uh, to, to join such an exceptional list of, of speakers. Well, it is encouraging to make announcements about the access to space for all initiatives so frequently in recent months. This underscores uh, what we as the space community can achieve uh, together. As I often say, there are no limits to ambition N not if we join forces. Access to space for all is a great example of this mantra, this approach, manifesting the true power of triangular cooperation. As it keeps evolving, we are enlarging its reach. Nine ends on opportunities are on offer across the three different domains, experiments in hypergravity and microgravity environments, satellite development and space exploration. We are also advancing theoretical knowledge, an integral part of the process. The educational component includes different resources and information, webinar series, workshops, training, teachers guides and fellowships. All of this help formulate the basic needs OK, I've been muted. I don't know why. Sorry. <laughs> so at this stage, we determine the challenges in the application process and strive to advance the quality of documentation we receive. It is critical for success. Our past ap applicants exemplify the benefits of such an approach as some had managed to improve and eventually succeed. Also, with more experience working on the Access to Space for All initiative, we can see a, that it is growing into the platform we had hoped it will become. Our these and applicants alike can utilize the existing opportunities for their development, not just in the short term, but with a lasting impact. Kenya has transformed its capacities through this initiative, starting with KiboCube. In 2018, it had deployed its first satellite from the ISS, the International Space Station. One Kunz 1PF completed its mission two years after and proven to be a game changer for the country. Kenya went on to apply for other programs under the Access to Space for All initiative. In 2021, a joint application of three African nations was selected for the Bartolomeo opportunity to scale up their technical capabilities and address climate change in the region. And the story does not stop there. Later, Kenya also won the Isomscope opportunity to receive a telescope for promoting and supporting space science research and outreach programs locally. We are pleased to see Kenya effectively utilizing the opportunities for advancing its national space program. Guatemala has embarked on a similar path, starting their journey through KiboCube, thanks to which the country deployed its first ever satellite in June 2020, and allow me to say in full pandemic. Building on this valuable experience, its focus is now also on other opportunities, and I'm thrilled to see even regional implications of this exciting journey. We have now another 
Latin America team taking part in KibaCube. Mauritius deployed its first satellite, MirSat-1, in June 2021, and has since Produce a variety of beautiful images. The project reached many students through antenna workshops the team conducted with the Amateur Radio Society in Mauritius. After the deployment, schools all over Mauritius used the antenna developed during the workshops to receive data from the satellite. The first team to receive the data were from an all-female team at the Forest Side SSS Girls School. Empowerment of women and girls to spray through space in action. Mauritius has ambitious plans for developing a space program owing to their success of MIRSAT 1. They aim to pursue capacity building, awareness raising, and development of satellite technologies and create a national network for space science, bringing together policymakers, academia, and industry. These are clear manifestations of QBQ being both the opportunity to deploy CubeSats and a chance for countries to impact their communities for years ahead. It is exciting that with JAXA, we have advanced the opportunity over the years. Owing to the success of the program, we have continued to renew our agreement with JAXA to provide more opportunities for various countries to join KiboCube, a clear demonstration of JAXA's devotion to advancing access to space globally. The KiboCube Academy webinars that started in 2021 also offered gradual learning steps for satellite development and advancing space capabilities through education. Owing to the success of Season 1, we have proceeded with the organization of Season 2. These webinars have reached hundreds of people throughout the past couple of months. Furthermore, with the long-standing collaboration between UNUS and JAXA and other stakeholders, we provide intensive technical and administrative support for teams to maximize their experience through international cooperation. We have much to look forward to in the future. There are currently three CubeSats under preparation that will deepen the already impressive legacy we are building through KiboCube. And we are about to add two more to the list. UNUS and JAXA are extremely pleased to announce the two teams selected for the sixth round. First one is the Universidad Popular Autónoma del Estado de Puebla of Mexico and the private higher school of engineering and applied technology of Tunisia. These teams will be launching their CubeSats to contribute to socioeconomic matters specific to the regions. Their planned contribution address eight of the 17 SDGs and will further cement the power of space for solving many challenges here on Earth. It is critically important that both missions bring in the young, bring in the young generation, supporting the development of skills and knowledge and nurturing a cooperative spirit are integral for future careers. Within this experience and through outreach activities, we help spark that much needed attention towards science technology and innovation. I cannot express how thrilled and honored I am to work with our partners, with our partner JAXA. Year after year, they have committed more and more and the results speak for themselves. Allow me to also thank all the supporters of this program. KiboCube has been a transformative experience for UNUSA, for our partners, and most importantly, for the UN member states. The stories of the teams that have already managed to launch their CubeSats are an inspiration for all of us. The access to Space for All and KiboCube within it are true masterpieces of multilateralism and international cooperation. Our great collaboration with JAXA builds on years of mutual trust and goals and has translated into an unprecedented opportunity for emerging and non space faring nations. I sincerely hope we will be able to provide even more rounds in the future together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director, for your opening remarks and announcing the awardees. Next, I'd like to invite to the floor His Excellency Mr. Hikihara Takeshi, 
who is the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Permanent Mission of Japan to the International Organizations in Vienna. He has sent us a recording, so um, I would like to play it now. Director Di Popo, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to join you here at this important side event at the occasion of the Scientific and Technical Subcommittee of Opus. For Japan, space technology is a key tool to address emerging global challenges and achieve the sustainable development goals. There are so many benefits that space technology brings to our daily life, such as weather forecast, telecommunication, navigation, efficient agriculture, as well as disaster management. In order for all countries to enjoy these benefits, capacity building is of vital importance. We recognize the need to help more and more countries to gain access to the advantages of, of space technology. That is why Japan has been actively engaged in the capacity building of new and diversified space nations and actors together with UNOSA. Today's side event is titled Announcement of Awardees for the Sixth Round of Kibo Cube. Kibo Cube is a program hosted jointly by UNUSA and JAXA under the Space for All initiative of UNUSA. In October 2021, the 76th United Nations General Assembly adopted the Space 2030 Agenda, which highlights the importance of this program as a useful tool for capacity building in the 21st century. Kibo Cube provides educational and research institutions of UN member states with the opportunity to deploy Cube satellites into orbit from the Japanese experimental module called Kibo of the International Space Station. Kibo means hope in Japanese. Until now, six teams from countries all across the globe were selected through five rounds of public offerings, namely Kenya, Guatemala, Mauritius, Indonesia, Moldova, and the Central American Integration System. The satellites of Kenya, Guatemala, and Mauritius have already been deployed into orbit from the Kibo module. We look forward to supporting the other satellites in their development toward a successful deployment. Today, I am delighted to learn that two additional teams, this time from Mexico and Tunisia, have been selected as the winners of the sixth round of offering. Let me convey my sincere congratulations to the two teams and honor their spirit of perseverance for taking on this great challenge. I'm convinced that both teams will successfully de develop and deploy their satellites through the Kibo Cube program. Their success will bring tangible benefits to their country and offer hope for Kibo for their future generations. In closing, let me once again express my sincere gratitude to you and yourself for their good and to all those who have been working tirelessly on this program. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Hikihara Takeshi um, for this remark. And with this, I would like to introduce to the floor the next speaker, who is His Excellency, Mr. Mohamed Megsani, the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the Permanent Mission of Tunisia to the International Organizations in Vienna. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank, thank you very much. Dr. Simonetta Di Pippo, Excellencies, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pleasure to join you today at this special event organized on the occasion of the 59th session of the Scientific and Technical Subcommittee. At first, I would like to express my appreciation to Dr. Simonetta Di Pippo and comment her for her commitment, leadership, and efforts made during her mandate, and in particular, her dedication and valuable contribution towards making space accessible for all. I wish you, Dr. D. Pippo, all the best on your future endeavors. I would also like to express my gratitude to the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space and Japan Aerospace Exploitation Agency for ensuring the organization of this important event 
and for giving us a great opportunity to meet and to celebrate the success of the Tunisian youth, as well as for their support and for giving the Tunisian experts and researchers the opportunity to excel in this ambitious sector and for guiding them in making their first steps into space. My congratulations go to Ms. Hannah Awinet, Director of the Engineering School, ESPITA, her partners, and more specifically, to the Tunisian Young team of engineers, experts, and researchers for their fruitful work and collaboration that allowed them to win the sixth round of the KIPOCUBE Keep, program and enable Tunisia to have its first educational satellite Tunisat-1, which is designed by a young Tunisian team and will be developed and manufactured in Tunisia. Indeed, I am very glad and proud today in my capacity as ambassador, permanent representative of Tunisia, and as a Tunisian national to take part in this ceremony that awards well-qualified and brilliant Tunisian youth. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the light of global changes and the rise of nations focused on knowledge and technology, Tunisia naturally aspires to explore recent technological developments, including that of space and its applications for peaceful purposes and sustainable development. To this end, Tunisia, in the context of the preparation of its new strategy in the space field, acts on three components. The development of reflections and proposals on public policies to be conducted under the national strategy on space to better benefit from the latest developments from peaceful applications and development. The access and the exploitation of the means and resources available within the framework of the international cooperation and the promotion of networking actions on the national and international level for the development of capacities through training and research by means of new collaborative projects. In line with the progress made by Tunisia in this ambitious space sector, as well as the will to induce dynamics to science, research, and collaboration in this field with regional and international partners, Tunisia looks forward to enhancing cooperation with UNUSA and the different institutions and agencies active in this field, such as JAXA. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, making tangible steps towards more cooperation to govern space activities and in strengthening capacity to use space science technology and applications is imperative in achieving the aspiration of all for peaceful and sustainable use of outer space. Thank you. Thank you very much for those remarks. I would like to introduce the next speaker to the floor, who is Mr. Alberto Ignacio Glenda Rivas, who is the Minister of the Permanent Mission of Mexico to the International Organizations in Vienna. Yeah, Minister, you have the floor. Dr. Simonetta Di Pipo, His Excellency Ambassador Ikihara Takeshi Sama, Mr. Joshi Yoshikatsu Sama, Ambassador Mesagani, all people who is joining us today. I would like to begin by expressing my most sincere recognition to the people and institutions behind the precious initiative, which is Kibo Cube, namely the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs and the Japan Cooperation Program on CubeSat deployment from the International Space Station under the Access to Space for All initiative. I'll do, I will not go into any technicalities, since most of you are more, more knowledgeable in space science than me. It is with great pride to be part of this award for Mexico and its CubeSat Shiba Uno project developed by the Autonomous Popular University of Puebla, Universidad Popular Autónoma de Puebla, UPAEP. Congratulations. 
This is a recognition to the work of the students and professors who are working under the leadership of Dr. Simon Vargas at UPAEP Engineering Department, to their commitment, passion for what they do, and the ability to add up and collaborate with other national institutions, among them, Mexican Space Agency, the National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM, and National Polytechnic Institution, hopefully with the support of the National Council for Science and Technology, CONACI. UPAEP has the credit for being part of the development and launching of the first Mexican nanosatellite, Aztec Sat-1, from the International Space Station. UPAEP counts on a well-established program to monitor volcanic activities in Mexico. We have 43 active volcanoes. Therefore, the strong importance we attach to following, to following their trepidations and the expressions of our land. This Mexican project, Shibal 1, has the virtue of being a tool to generate early warning models to prevent major disasters, especially for most vulnerable people in living in the vicinity of volcanoes. Today's award for the project of Shibal 1 is a recognition that Mexico is on the right track to be part of the space science and technology advancement. Mexico's aerospace industry is relatively young, yet it is an excellent example of growth, investment, and job creation. Outer, outer space capabilities look forward to build on this basis. Thus, it is imperative to motivate and support the education of tomorrow's professionals, skills and know-how, academic research and technological development. But equally important is the promotion of international collaborations and partnerships to move ahead and benefit from the peaceful uses of outer space for sustainable development. UPAEP Aerospace Engineering Program is an exemplary case on this path. I am glad to share this day with Tunisia and their young space scientists. Congratulations to them as well. On behalf of the Autonomous Popular University of Puebla and Mexico, I want to thank Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, and I want to thank UNOSA for this award. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Minister, for those kind words, and I would like to thank all the representatives from the different permanent missions. With this, I would like to go into the next session, which is um, to invite the actual representatives of the two awarded teams. First, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Aoinet Hanna, who is the director of engineering school, um, who is the director of the engineering school and also the project coordinator of this team. Um, she is from the private higher school of engineering and applied technology and ESPITA of Tunisia. Dr. Aoinet, you have the floor. Your Excellency, Dr. Simon Tati Pipo, Director of the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. Your Excellency, Mr. Jussi Yoshiki Kazu, Director of the International Relations and Research Department for Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Your Excellency, Mr. Nikihara Takishi, Ambassador Extraordinary and Permanent Representative of Japan. Your Excellency, Mr. Mohamed Zani, Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Tunisia. And Your Excellency Alberto Rivas, Minister and Permanent Representative of Mexico. Distinguished UNUSA and JAXA colleagues, distinguished copious members, distinguished audience, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for me to be here with you today as a representative of the Engineering School, École Supérieure de l'Ingénierie et Technology Appliquée, ESPITA. We are glad to be awarded the sixth round of the Kumbu competition with our Mexican colleagues, whom I would like to really congratulate. Distinguished audience, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Tunisia is going to space. Our youth is going to space. Our green talents, students and engineers are going to space. The country of Carthage Empire of Hannibal, Ibn and many others is going to space. Ispita is going to space. <laughs> Two steps 
planning will be the first educational satellite in the history of Tunisia. We are proud to lead this pioneering project for the Tunisian young yet ambitious space sector. Our team of Tunisian experts and students at ISPITA and around the world have been working hard on the design of the satellite and we have made remarkable progress since the beginning of our activities in February 2021. We have the ultimate objective of making our engineering school ISPITA one of the major academic actors for the most brilliant and elite students in the fields of space science and engineering, and to provide our high world class level training to qualify the next generation of engineers that will develop the local African space industry. Our continent is making progress in this field, and our vision for Tunisia and Africa is aligned with this progress. ISPITA is one of the schools of the EHU group. We are present in different, different African countries and we have a lot of international students. So, that they work in the TrueSat. So, TrueSat 1 will be developed, manufactured, and tested in Tunisia by Tunisia and African students, researchers, and engineers. The objective of our TrueSat mission are the following. Develop at least 30% of the CubeSat component in Tunisia. Support the development of the Tunisian framework for space activities, taking and recover scale images of Tunisia and Africa. And use this mission as an example to teach at least 500 Tunisian youth about the different phases of the space project. And to use at least 100,000 Tunisian citizens to the application of space technology in their day to day lives. We would like to warmly thank the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, UNUSA, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, for their support and for awarding us the unique opportunity to accelerate the development of our local space program. Many thanks to all our partners as well inside and outside Tunisia for their trust and continuous support. We are making the first steps in this space and we will be very open to regional and international collaboration with our institution in this field. We will also contribute to advancing the discussion and to taking effective measures toward the enforcing space sustainability and guaranteeing the continuity of peaceful uses of outer space. From Tunisia, I would like to conclude with some words from a Japanese song entitled Yonihawa Sayonara. Maybe France forever, keep it to the path of hope, keep the promise of our friendship forever, goodbye for now until we meet again, I hope. Thank you, Japan. Thank you, Yunusa. And congratulations to all the Tunisian citizens. Tunisia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hannah. And it is a pleasure to see that you are having a physical event there. It's very exciting. Next, I would like to introduce the, uh, the speaker from Mexico, uh, Mr. Eugenia Urtia Aldisua, who is the Vice Rector of the Universidad Popular Autónoma del Estado de Puebla, UPAEP. Thank you very much, Dr. Di Pipo, Mr. Takeshi, Mr. Yoshikashu, Mr. Glender, and Mr. Mesgani. Good morning, good evening. Congratulations to the Tunisian team, too. First, I would like to thank UNOSA through Dr. Dr. Esa Di, Pop, Di, Di Pipo and JAXA through Dr. Yoshikazu for giving us the opportunity to participate in the sixth round of the Kibo Q program. All of us at UPAEP are extremely happy and enthusiastic about being awarded the opportunity to launch the Shiba 1 nanosatellite into space. The community of professors and students is more than willing to do everything necessary to make the Shiva One project a success. We know that this is a unique opportunity to develop the technological skills of our students and at the same time contribute to Mexico's advancements towards the future of space science. 
Puebla, Mexico, where we live, is surrounded by volcanoes, one of them called Popocatépetl, meaning smoking mountain in the language of the Aztecs, is still active, as are many of the volcanoes in Japan and other parts of the world. Interestingly, in the story of the conquest of Mexico Tenochtitlan by the Spaniards in the 16th century, this volcano is mentioned and it is said that it was a source of sulfur for the gunpowder of the con conquerors. This volcano has shown an increase in its activity since December 1994, and more than once the cities of Puebla and Mexico have been covered with ash from the small eruptions. The increase in volcanic activity has led us to consider the possibility of designing and building several CubeSats to better understand our volcano and minimize risks to the surrounding populations. The Shiba One project's first step consists of photographing the Popocatépetl volcano in the visible, visible wavelengths to determine the extent of ash distribution after the many exhalations and explosions which occur annually. As you can see in this slide, there are many active volcanoes in Mexico. One of them, Citlaltepetl, is the highest in Mexico. Popocatépetl is the second one. Most of the times, they are gorgeous mountains, but also dangerous for human populations. Launching Shiva One into lower, lower Earth orbit would also give us the possibility of photographing other Mexican active volcanoes from space. As shown in this next slide, Shiva One includes several subsystems, two of which stand out the Aguila board, the Eagle being the university's mascot, and the visible wavelength camera. The camera will obviously take pictures, and the Aguila board will allow that to be sent via the global star constellation to streamline the transmissions of images from data processing at UPAEP. Next, a concept of operation diagram is presented on this, this slide. After the deployment of Shiba One into its orbit, it will begin to send beacons to the ground stations, as well as data from the images taken by the camera. At the same time, transmission to the global star constellation will occur. All information will then be processed at UPAE for analysis. Once again, we would like to emphasize that this is a great opportunity you know, and JAXA, JAXA has offered us, allowing us to, be in this to begin this invaluable study of act active volcanoes in Mexico. Finally, there is nothing left but to recognize the efforts of the United Nations to promote the use of space for peaceful purposes. From space, there are no borders. We are one world, and it belongs to everyone, and together we have to take care of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the interesting presentations. Um, congratulations again. We really look forward to the two projects. And last but not least, I would like to introduce to the floor Mr. Shoji Yoshikazu, who is the Director of International Relations and the Research Department at Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Mr. Shoji, you have the floor. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And good morning, distinguished delegates. Mm -hmm. This is Shoji Yoshikazu, Director of International Relations and Research Department of JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. It is our pleasure that we are able to announce UPAEP and ESPITA as the awardees of the sixth round of KiboCube program in the side event of 59th Scientific and Technical Subcommittee of UNICOPIUS. Congratulations. First of all, let me extend my sincere appreci appreciation to His Excellency Ambassador Hikihara Takeshi from Japan and His Excellency Ambassador Mohamed Mezugani from Tunisia and Minister Alberto Ignacio Glenda Rivas from Mexico for your attendance. I wish that this project will benefit relationships between Mexico, Tunisia, and Japan, and will contribute to facilitate collaboration in space between the three countries. I'd also like to express my sincere gratitude to Director DiPipo of UNUSA and your team 
for your excellent work in organizing this wonderful event. The 10 centimeter cubical 1U CubeSat has been valued for its cost effectiveness, educational value, and as a testbed for new technology, which functions as a reasonable entry point for those who are yet to gain the access to space. In this regard, JAXA has cont continued KiboCube program with UNUSA over the past seven years to help space emerging countries join space activities by offering the opportunities to deploy their CubeSats from the Japanese experimental module KIBO on board the International Space Station ISS. JAXA has developed and operated the JSOLT, GEM Small Satellite Orbital Deployer installed in the KIBO, which has served one of the best platforms in capacity building for space emerging countries. So far, the selected entities from Kenya, Guatemala, and Mauritius have successfully deployed their CubeSat from the ISS Kibo, which has strongly supported their efforts in gaining space capability. The University of Nairobi in Kenya, the first round of OD, has carried out a unique mission named Wankus PF to capture raw resolution images and transmit them to the ground for the purpose of monitoring agricultural products. The mission has a great success in which more than 300 images were acquired from space. And the achievement facilitated the country to establish the space agency, agency in the country, the Kenyan Space Agency, in September 2018. Universidad del Valle de Guatemala from the second round has also completed its CubeSat project titled Quetzal 1, Quetzal 1 from April through November in 19, 2020 with various technology demonstrations in which the CubeSat successfully captured 16 images from space. The project involved more than 100 people with an average of 21 years old which has significantly contributed to the capacity building of Guatemala. As the latest example, Mauritius Research and Innovation Council from the third round is now operating its CubeSat named MIASAT-1 after the successful deployment in June last year. The project is going well as the CubeSat successfully sent the first image last year in the sixth round, we are very much looking forward to working with UPAEP and ESPITA and witnessing the deployment of uh, JIBA-1, JIBA-1 and uh, TUNSAT-1 from the ISS KIBO in the future. Once again, congratulations. JAXA will continue to support space emerging countries by utilizing Japan experimental module KIBO as a unique platform for enhancing international collaboration. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Shoji. And I would like to thank all the representatives that were attending this event. Um, with this, um, I would like to close the event. Before we go, I'd just like to mention that the Access to Space for All initiative um, has a lot of things going on. As I've explained in the beginning, we have two opportunities that are currently open. So if any of the teams, any of the um, applicants, anyone here is interested, please apply. And of course, regarding KiboCube, um, you and Nusa and JAXA will be working together to be able to open more opportunities. So please stay tuned. With this, um, thank you all for joining in and congratulations to the two teams. And we look forward to having your successful deployment in the future. Thank you, everyone, and have a nice day. Bye.